I've noticed a new genre of game popping up more and more on Steam. Short, cutesy, cozy games with wacky characters and goofy dialogue. Games with a small yet dense open world and fun traversal mechanics. All of these qualities that are really similar to the 2019 indie hit A Short Hike. The games I'm showing on screen have all clearly taken heavy inspiration from A Short Hike, but there is no name for the genre yet, so I've decided to call them Hike Likes. And I tried out every hike like I could find on Steam to tell you guys which ones are worth your time. For those of you who aren't familiar, A Short Hike is a short game about climbing a mountain. You play as a cute little bird who can glide and climb, and the entire world is open to you from the get-go. You don't have to go straight up the mountain. You can take all of the side paths, explore beaches, go fishing, join the climbing club, search for treasure, or spend way too long playing beach stickball. What's really cool about A Short Hike is that it is an open world game, but isn't overwhelmingly massive. It's small and dense, packed with secrets and people to talk to and things to mess around with. You could spend anywhere from one to four hours playing, depending on how much side content you interact with, but you will want to do all the side content because that's where the charm of the game lies. There are so many interesting characters and fun side quests. Being able to take things at your own pace is part of the appeal in a cozy game like this. Spending your time chatting with all of the NPCs, it never feels like a waste because they all have something funny to say. The style of dialogue in a short hike is a trait that gets carried across into all of the hike likes that I'm about to play. It's very quirky and silly, and it doesn't feel like an NPC talking to some hero on an epic quest. It just feels like two normal people talking. The dialogue exudes a super laid back and chill vibe, which again, is perfect for a cozy game. The game was a massive hit, and deservedly so. It currently has a 99% positive rating on Steam, over 13,000 reviews. It was such a unique and successful formula that players seem to really enjoy, so it only makes sense that a short hike would spawn a genre of games trying to replicate the feel that it had. Alright, so then what is a hike like? What are the qualities that I'm looking for in these games to officially label them as such? Well, hike likes will have most or all of the following traits. 1. A cute main character, probably an animal. 2. A small open world with something around every corner, packed to the brim with eccentric characters and side quests galore. 3. Quirky and silly dialogue that has a laid back and stress free feel to it. 4. Gliding and other fun movement mechanics. All but one of the games have gliding. I don't know, gliding around is just always fun, and it's even better if the game has other methods of traversal as well. Movement in these games should be fun. 5. A short runtime so the game can be beaten in one sitting. It doesn't need to drag on for 20 hours, 3 is fine. 6. Cozy, comfy vibes. And 7. Just generally the same feel as a short hike. This one is a bit more subjective than the rest, but you know what I mean. A game where if you play it, you'll think, oh, this is like a short hike. These games have all just been inspired, but are very much their own thing. So that's our checklist. These traits are what make a game a hike-like. Now let's jump into the first of our four games, Haven Park. Haven Park is the game that is most clearly inspired by a short hike, and most of the Steam reviews reference this, but its gameplay is actually the least similar out of all of the games that I'm about to play. Yes, you do play as a cute bird, so they have that in common. And yes, the dialogue is the same in both games. It's quirky and fun, but Haven Park is actually more of a base builder game. The plot is, you are taking over this holiday park from your grandmother, so you explore the ground and try to restore it to its former glory. You pick up materials from the ground and build all sorts of amenities. Tents, campfires, umbrellas, barbecues. As more campers come, they'll request more buildings, whether it be a living space, an activity, or decoration. It's pretty fun. You can choose where to place everything and design the campsite your own way. It's really fun the first couple of times, but with the few amount of buildable structures in the game, it can become repetitive to put the same things down in each campsite. And overall, the whole world just feels like a more bare bones and less dense version of a short hike. Also, terribly, there is no gliding in this game, so it doesn't have any cool movement mechanics to make exploring the world fun. 
However, Haven Park took me only two and a half hours to beat. It has those cozy comfy vibes which everybody loves, and it's a sweet little game that you can complete in a single evening. The next game on our list is Mail Time. In this miniature world filled with bugs, birds, bears, and more, you take the role of a mail scout, destined to deliver letters and parcels. Your first ever delivery mission is to give a letter to the mysterious Greg, but you don't know where he is, so you set off on a journey to find this guy, asking all of the locals if they know anything, and of course, helping them out with their own deliveries along the way. The game looks super lovely. It has this beautiful art style which makes it look like everything has been hand drawn with felt tip pens. It has everything I was talking about before on a hike like checklist. The vibes are on point. This time the game takes place in a more cottage core foresty setting, which is super cozy and makes you feel like you're a little critter living underneath all of the foliage. There is a gliding mechanic which immediately makes any game 10 times more fun, and you can also double jump. Fun movement mechanics are a staple of the genre and they're appreciated here. It has plenty of talking animals and funny dialogue from goofy characters, everything you could ever want. It's also super short. I 100% of the game in less than 3 hours, which was a blast. Getting all the achievements wasn't too hard and it also didn't take that long, so I'd recommend doing that if you try out the game. Overall, Mail Time is a very solid entry into the hike-like genre and a delightful experience. Next up, we have Smooshy Come Home. This is the most recent game that I played. It released in June of 2023, and it was a joy. Our protagonist is Smooshy, a cute mushroom and the eldest of four siblings. One day, Smooshy is picked up by a bird and dropped far from home. Now lost in the forest, Smooshy has to make some new friends and find his way home. Of course, he can glide around with a big leaf over his head, along with sprinting, diving underwater, and climbing up walls. Smooshy Come Home has some really good platforming sections using these mechanics, and there are also some cave areas which dabble into puzzle platforming territory. There are also little wind critters around the map which will upgrade your glider to let you fly further. The game is the most linear of the bunch, making you progress through three areas with a main objective in each. But this isn't a bad thing, there are still a bunch of side quests and secrets to find around the three maps. You just progress through the areas in a more straightforward fashion than you can in a short hike. Exploration is rewarding and all the characters are a joy to talk to. Smooshy Come Home is everything you would expect it to be and it's a lovely time. There's nothing to really complain about here. You get to play as a little mushroom, what else could you want? Lil Gator Game is our final hike like on the list and let me say right now, it is amazing. The game knew exactly what it wanted to be. You play as a little gator who likes to play imagination games and pretend that he's a hero on a quest. But as time went on, his older sister grew up and all of a sudden she's too busy to play with him. Over the course of the game, you try to rally all of your friends to create the biggest quest ever. Something to remind her how fun playing together can be. Just like a short hike, the world is super dense with things to do. There are 57 friends that you can make around the island and each one will have a fun side quest for you. There is always something around every corner, and even just talking to these creatures is a good time. The dialogue in this game is amazing, all of the characters have clear personalities, and it's a delight to talk to all of your friends in the playground. It makes you want to do as many side quests as possible, because all of the characters are so unique and fun. And here's something crazy, the game's actually funny. The others are too, but I think this one resonated with me the most. And it's so fun, I can't stress that enough. The gameplay is cool because there are so many wacky items given to you that let you interact with the world in new ways. First of all, you can glide in this game, which as we already know, makes the game an instant banger. But it doesn't stop there, not at all. You have a shield which you can use to slide down hills, which is really fun. Also, if you time your jumps right, you can use the shield to bounce really fast on water like a jet ski. The movement tech in this game is honestly way better than it needs to be, but I'm not complaining. There are also items that let you do stuff you don't need to do, but are cool anyway. Like the bubblegum, which lets you fly directly up. The sticky hand, which is kind of like a grappling hook. The ragdoll, which lets you ragdoll. The shuriken, the bomb, along with a bunch of different variants on your sword and costume. The dev has made a dense open world, which is a literal life-sized playground. 
When I was writing this section, I found myself saying fun a lot. But that's just the best way to describe Lil Gator Game. It's fun. There's something about the childlike innocence this game portrays that makes it pure, unadulterated fun. Lil Gator Game also has the deepest story out of all the games I played, and it took me just under 4 hours to complete. So this game ticks off all of the boxes on our hike like checklist. I have nothing to complain about, and I don't see how anybody could. So yeah, those are all the hike likes that I know about. My personal favourite and the one I would recommend to you guys is Lil Gator Game, with my second prize going to Smooshy Come Home. I think this is a fun new genre that's popping up and it's interesting to see the influence that a short hike had on all of these games. Also, the popularity of cozy games in general is growing a lot right now, so I expect we will see many more hike likes in the future. If you want to support the channel and watch some bonus content, you should check out the Patreon. Games I Beat in January is up now and there's a new exclusive video every month. Thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. Swagfroggy, Liam Blackford, Owen Freer, and Rian. Like and subscribe, thank you for watching.